गाइस एंड वेलकम टू मोटर बीम नाउ दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम आई एम राइडिंग द इंडियन चीफ दिस वन इज अ डार्क हॉर्स इट कम्स फ्रॉम अमेरिका एंड आई हैव वन बिग क्वेश्चन हाउ द डू अमेरिकन राइड दिस मोटरसाइकिल एंड फॉर अ प्राइस टैग ऑफ ट्वेंटी पॉइंट एट लैख रुपीज शुड यू बाई इट इन इंडिया डज इट मेक सेंस वील फाइंड दैट आउट इन टू डेज वीडियो बट बिफोर बिगिन सब्सक्राइब टू मोटर बीम एंड डोंट फर्गेट टू हिट द बेल आईकॉन The first problem that I have with this motorcycle is the turning radius. Now you see, once I pick it up, although this motorcycle is a little over 300 kg, because it is low slung, it is easy to pick up, and the good part is the seat height because it is under 600 mm. But, 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 once you turn the handlebar, it does not turn much, and I have to stretch my hand quite a lot. I am leaning in a bit, and this motorcycle has a wheelbase over 1600 mm, 1626 to be precise. Taking a U-turn within a two-lane road is next to impossible on this motorcycle. However, the only beneficial part is that since you are sitting so low, you can use your legs, pull it back, push it ahead, pull it back, push it ahead, and keep doing that. That is one of the problem I have. Second thing is this is an air-cooled motor, and there's a lot of heat going around. It is just 20 degrees right now, and this temperature is feeling very good because there's a lot of heat coming to me. But thing is that there's a feature that this motorcycle specifically has because this is a dark horse is that it turns off. the rear cylinder so my balls don't burn while idling situations however there is so much heat going around that if i put a drop of water on the exhaust covers too it will just vaporize another thing which i don't like actually it's not about liking it gets me worried it's the tank lid because it just opens directly there's no key or anything to it however i suppose there might be an accessory and when i talk about the key this motorcycle does not really require a key there's a key for right in my pocket you only require a key to lock the handlebar from here however the problem is that there's a wire going around this brake line is going around and not able to do it very easily not a design flaw as such but then again not as much of convenience too now if i lose this key fob i'll give it to zubair right now to take it away from me like go till a distance further away what if i don't have a key fob next to me how do i turn on this motorcycle now there is a safety feature that's there that without the key fob even without the key fob you can turn on this motorcycle all you have to do is press on the on button and what this motorcycle will do is now you can see there's a red sign coming right over here that it cannot detect the key fob and then it will show a ride command i don't know if the brightness is just about right but now you can put down your code it's a four digit code and thanks to one of the reviewers from delhi we don't know the code because indian hasn't shared it <laughs> since they displayed the code on their video live so they changed the code and they are not giving out the code but this is another option that you can put some code like 5690 and just go for it and unlock the motorcycle once the motorcycle is unlocked all the features that you want to access from it can be taken just make sure that you don't press the off button otherwise you'll have to do the complete process of turning on the motorcycle and putting the code all over again and think about it doing this in a traffic situation where everyone behind you is honking on you there's a lot of wind blast that comes on this motorcycle because there's nothing to hide from in front and hence once you start pushing this motorcycle because this one goes quickly it is a lot of problem because you are literally hanging onto the handlebars and that is a bit of an issue however there is an accessory to get a visor where you can curb the wind blast but that is an additional cost which comes another things are the brakes because you get a single disc at the front and single disc at the rear and the braking feedback is not as spontaneous the brakes are good no doubt about it but then the feedback that you require from it that you are pushing this motorcycle it does not come to a halt immediately brakes are good but they require a bit more power dual disc at the front would have made this package a lot more better now this is a bare bones stock motorcycle and you do not get a pillion seat too you arrive solo so why do americans actually like it because there are so many problems no i'll tell you the reason why Number one reason is the motor right over here. It is a 116 cubic inch, or you can say 1890 cc air cool V twin motor, which produces 162 newton meters of torque. I don't know the power figures. Indian motorcycles don't share the power figures. But then 162 newton meters for a motorcycle that weighs only 300 kg and it just goes whack open crazy. However, to control that, you don't even have traction control. You have just three riding modes. So all you have to do is control on your throttle, and that's about it. to make things mellow you don't have a chain you have a belt drive right over here but then again a mellowest 
Riding mode is a tour mode which can be switched from the meter itself. The standard mode is pretty nice, usable at every places and the sport mode tells you in the face because you literally hang on to the motorcycle as soon as you open throttle because it accelerates like crazy. The exhaust note of this motorcycle is also pretty exciting. Once it's on, there is a potato, potato, potato noise that there is an idling noise and once you rev it, And this is still the standard exhaust. You can get a level 1 too, which is still legal and louder than this. Wow! Now you get machine cut alloys as standard for the dark horse. That is the front is a 19 incher, the rear is a 16 incher, shot with pearly rubber, 130 section front and about 160 section for the rear. However, for homologation, you have to put a number plate for India, which is an addition. This is a tough unit, but looks a little out of place. However, the matte gloss finish on the mudguard as well as on the body overall looks quite nice. The second thing which I like the most about the design is the headlight. This is an all LED unit. So many LEDs with different designs and they are quite purposeful. The high beam works well. The low beam at night looks pretty nice because I rode it early morning today and it does light up the road pretty well. Plus, the indicators at the rear work for the tail light too which is a very good thing you get an open open design right over here there's no fairing there's nothing here so it looks pretty dope you get indian logo right at the top telescopic folks at the front there's a chassis number right over here and then again if you look at the tank this is a metal tank containing about 15.1 liters of fuel which is good enough to go for about 250 kilometers then again this motorcycle has a very good instrument cluster and the good part is that this is a touchscreen unit let's talk about it a bit more now this meter is a complete touchscreen, complete digital but it has analog details all around. Now you get two screens, one is this and second is this where you can swipe and swipe in any way and it will change. Good part is that with the switch gear you can change data too but this touchscreen works pretty well. This is the bike data, I am getting close to 5.1 liters for 100 kilometers that is 20 ka mileage, 20, 124 ka range is left, uh, outside temperature is close to 27 degrees. Then uh, you can change the riding uh, modes from here. Then if I change anything, I can get the ride data which I've been riding since morning and I can get the maps too. But then these maps are not updated for India, they'll come in a little later. And that's about it. That is the complete set of details you get. Plus touchscreen works pretty well if you go into the settings and you can change a lot more data too. So that is pretty, pretty useful. The mirrors work pretty well too. You have to adjust it a little because of the design. But then once you get the hang, you can actually see what's behind without any issues because there are no vibrations coming to the mirrors as such. If we talk about the switch gear, it is very very purposeful. This is the starter button. This is the button where you turn off or on the motorcycle. This is the cruise control button and yes, the cruise control does work pretty well. The meter is being controlled, that's the fuel pump. The meter is being controlled with a switch as a pass light switch works for the controlling of this meter. Not controlling, it controls the meter and you can just click on it and switch the data. Then again, the button over here is for the horn, which is pretty loud. This button is for the high beam switch and a pass light switch. The button over here where is the standard placement for the horn is basically a joystick for music and everything. Right next to it is a button to change the data on the meter. Like if you want to select something like this, something like that. You want to change, you want to start new, pause, something. You can do that. So with this joystick, you can do that. And last is the indicator switch. Now the good part is if you long press this, there will be a hazard light which starts. So that is another good thing going around. Everything is completely electronic, but if I talk about the electronics, the only thing that you get in this motorcycle is ABS. So the touchscreen works with the gloves too. It's pretty nice. And let's go. And as you could see right now, one of the engine is shut vibrates in a different manner and then as it stops it vibrates again the tank also vibrates it's mounted on rubber mounts but it works pretty fine even the audio guy wants to check this out <laughs> now this was in the normal mode standard mode throttle response is very nice but as soon as i turn it to touring mode it mellows down see not that immediate 
So touring mode makes the throttle response, changes the throttle response very nicely. But then again, once you go to sport mode, the punch is a little more exciting. On the sport mode too, as soon as you come down to a halt, the engine turns off. So not the engine, the cylinder turns off. So this is the sign that it gives. And we'll do a proper launch again with the sport mode. Oof. <laughs> it shows here sport mode. This is the screen that I like a lot. But let's do this so that you can see the numbers properly. The only thing that's scary is that the air-cooled motorcycles don't have traction control. Oh my goodness! In the fourth gear, it goes a little above 150 km per hour. It reaches 100 within the third gear itself. As soon as I shift to the third gear, at that third gear goes up to 130 km per hour but this cruising at 100 to 120 on the sixth gear it is only doing two and a half thousand rpm that is crazy my goodness as you open throttle Even with such a long wheelbase, this motorcycle is very easy to handle. Taking on traffic, filtering to traffic like this, it's not much of a task. On the 6th gear at 90 km per hour, you are doing 2000 RPM and there's literally, literally no vibrations. Wow! It leans in pretty nicely too. One more thing which I don't like while riding this is the clutch because it is quite heavy. There's no hydraulic clutch as an option too. If you want to change the riding mode, all you have to do is press this and leave throttle, it engages. Touring mode, even more calmer. So I'm riding in the third gear at 50 km per hour. I want to use the cruise control. Here it turns on and all I have to do is set. And the cruise control is set at 50. Want to reduce the speed, just go down, down, down. See? Press it again and it's shut. So the cruise control also works very nicely, about 35 kilometers per hour. Leaning in. Brilliant. Very nice. Now these Pirelli Dragon GT tyres grip really well on tarmac unless you are on some cement surfaces or on loose tarmac or, or basically loose gravel you just keep sliding all around because there is no traction to keep you in control however that said this motorcycle has very very good dynamics in terms of how it grips how it handles because although it is a 300 kg motorcycle out of which more than 50% of the weight is from the engine itself this one does lean in quite nicely has a good feedback to the handlebars and yes it keeps you in control all the time the only problem is the ergonomics which i already complained and that you can modify the way you like it because the foot pegs can be pushed a little more forward and with an accessory you can add a footboard or something like that so things can be changed as a bare bone stock motorcycle it is still comfortable for people my height i'm five feet six inches if you're any taller say six feet you might feel this motorcycle to be a bit cramped on paper the ground clearance of this motorcycle is just close to 125 m that's it 125 which is very very low and with a long wheelbase there are chances that you might hit a speed breaker or something like that good thing is that i have been riding it all the way in mumbai brought it to navi mumbai shooting it right now and there's not a single speed breaker that this motorcycle has created upon or a pothole or something like that because this one has been riding very nicely the ground clearance is less but then the suspension setup is actually pretty nice however if indian would have hidden the suspension behind the design like the harley has been with the with some of the other model it would have looked even more better but then this one since it is exposed on both the sides you can adjust it the way you want it because there is some adjustment given to it telescopic folks good overall balance of this motorcycle pretty nice it is a lot more front biased and that's why if you ask me to pop a wheelie on this motorcycle i won't do it 
and I don't have the balls to do it <laughs> because it is heavy. Looking at these two bazookas coming out like out of the proportion looks pretty nice to me. Offset number plate looks very nice to me too. However, middle-aged men which are above their 40s, those are the perfect customers for Indian because Americans too who ride these motorcycles are those guys. They want to have the power on tap but they want to stand out and they will ride it sanely and this is what the motorcycle is all about. The Indian chief has completed about 100 years now because somewhere close to 1921-1922 the first chief was launched and this one is kind of a tribute to it. The Dark Horse variant gets the most powerful engine too. So, Indian chief at 20.8 lakhs for me as a youngster does not make sense. But with the shortcomings, I won't buy it. However, for someone who wants to stand out, get a unique motorcycle, this is definitely something to look out for. If you own one, any of the Indian motorcycles or even Harleys, you definitely own a beauty. This is my verdict of the Indian Chief, which I kind of like a bit now, but I won't buy it right now until then this I'm a little older. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, do hit the like button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.